Hello and welcome back to the Go-Karts and Good Times YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to be dressing the tank. Well, not that tank specifically, but the one we spent all that time cleaning up. I do want to say that this video will have a lot less time lapses and clips of me actually doing the work on the part and more explaining between each step of the process. <laughs> The first step is cleaning, which will be quite an issue because of the previous coating in the tank. To try and get as much out as possible, we're going to use compressed air and a vacuum. Here we're trying to clean out the insides further with some acid. After nearly 24 hours of cycling acid through, you can already see the difference it makes. It'll be a couple days now to remove all the rust and get in every corner of the tank. With the first flushes of muriatic acid done, the only thing left to do before using the phosphoric acid is cleaning up places like the filler neck that the acid won't reach. As you can see, the acid flushes are already making an immense difference on the inside, with the only remaining rust really being surface rust because of flushing it with water. The last phosphoric acid flush should remove any remaining rust, create a good surface for coating adhesion and prevent flash rusting. Finally, the filler neck is cleaned up. And while I was at it, I spent the time to grind down the areas with dents or other imperfections. To prepare the tank for a last cycle of acid, we're using degreaser and a power washer to get out the debris. After the final cycle of phosphoric acid, it's washed out and ready to dry overnight. The important thing is removing all moisture before adding the interior coating to the tank. So we're going to use heat to achieve this. Acid did its job and there are almost no traces of rust left inside the tank. Unfortunately, while doing the acid flushes, we discovered a pinhole, not at the seam, but in a thin piece of metal behind it. It appears that there's already filler here from someone trying to fix the leak before and we're going to try to do the same with epoxy. While I didn't actually record us putting on the coating, it's more of the same, swishing it around, turning it over, and getting it into every corner of the tank. The coating is still drying, but you can see how getting this everywhere would prevent rust from returning or from new rust forming inside the tank. So. Now with all rust removed from the inside of the tank and the inside of the tank coated, I can start removing the rust and all the bad paint from the outside of the tank before we give it a new paint job. As much as I don't want to, I think I'm going to be taking the tank down to bare metal, filling in all the dents with body filler, and then repainting it at the same time as my dad repaints his gas tank. My dad did nearly the same with the gas tank from his 1985 Honda V65 Sabre. Unlike mine, however, he already painted his tank a couple years ago, but unfortunately fuel got underneath the paint around the filler neck and caused it to peel up. All that's left to do is get ready. sanding implements ruined and the top mostly done, I'm going to call it a nut. The bottom is still unsanded and I still have to go in and get into all the little nooks and crannies by hand, but for a day I think this is good progress. Before we move on with the painting process, we're going to use coarse sandpaper to rough up the surface where the biggest dents are and use this stuff to degrease it. We're putting some body filler on now so we won't have to wait later on in the process. <music> With 
With our first coat of bono on and set up, we're back in the garage to finish sanding the bottom of the tank. After your second night of working, almost all of the paint is removed. Tomorrow I can come in and get in all the little nooks and crannies and remove the remaining paint and do more bondo work on the top of the tank. After another pass of the body filler, the tank continues to get smoothed out. While I'm at it, I figured I'd paint a couple other little things like these end caps or these suspension components. While I'm looking, I can see that random little brackets all over the place are rusty or corroded, but most of those I'm probably going to come back and fix with spray paint. Others, like this large one, to hold various tubes, I'm probably just going to paint along with the tank. The rear brake pedal is something I am going to take off and deal with while I'm doing this painting. The shifter as well. And now I have a pile of parts I can start stripping. Instead of spending another couple hours getting all the little bits of paint that are stuck in tight spots around the tank, I'm going to be using this stuff, scrubbing it out, and then doing the final sanding. With all the paint removed and all of my tape seals destroyed, I have to mask off the ports and then I can move on to a final sanding. After a third day of sanding, the tank is basically done and these other parts that I want to paint tomorrow are basically cleaned off. So I'm ready to call it a night and come back tomorrow for painting. I'm back for day four, and today might finally be the day to paint. But before I do anything, I have to prep this radiator and weld on a new stud. Before paint, we have to degrease every surface. Our setup here is really very simple. It shows that almost anyone can do something like this at home themselves. Before any painting is done, the gun has to be completely spotless and moving parts oiled. When painting, it's always a good idea to have a piece of paper like this to do test sprays on. The gun also has to be thoroughly cleaned again. Moving on to the second coat of primer, I'm now going to tape off the fins and paint the end caps of the radiator. With that done, the radiator can now be hung up with the gas tank for the second round of primer. After another couple passes with Bondo and a once over with 320 on the tank, it's time for another coat of primer. Unfortunately, we've been held up the past couple days waiting for a rebuild kit for the paint gun. It had a weird sputtering issue and these parts haven't been replaced in a while. What also came in the mail is this gas cap I found on eBay. While it's meant to go on some newer Honda bikes, it fits mine just fine even though it's a little bit tight. And it came with a set of Honda keys. The 
besides having a weird sputtering issue when spraying on the paint, it's going on great. With parts like this, it's not going to be perfect. Well, after all, it's primer. It needs to be sanded, and in the end, it'll be fine. While we haven't necessarily been recording it, sanding has taken place between each coat of primer. And before we want to put color on, we want to clean the floor and make sure this is a dust-free environment. With another coat of primer, the tank continues to look smoother and smoother along with the other parts. This will probably be the last coat of primer before paint. Now for our first sprays of color. Now for a third and final coat of color. And to hang it from one of the hooks, you have to use touch-up paint to fix where the gun did not get. It's finally time to put clear coat on all the parts. An update on the tank. Unfortunately, the clear coat we tried to use was multiple years old, and so when it was coming out of the gun, it had little tiny bubbles. It was almost coming out slightly foamy, which left a weird uneven finish on the tank. In some spots it was okay, but in others it was terrible. So we had to sand it down. The effect is especially apparent on these parts, where it looks almost perfect here, but then you rotate it and you can see the terrible finish. On the other one, you can see just how badly it bubbled. This forced us to sand off all the clear, and unfortunately, in some spots, we also went through the color, which forces us to put another layer of primer on and practically start over. While he's working on fixing the tank, I'm going to get started on these suspension components. Typically, I'd send these out to get powder coated, but they have needle bearings and seals that I don't know if I'll be able to get, so instead I'll be playing it safe and using a paint-on rust preventative coating. To start, I'll be thoroughly degreasing these. Parts clean, I'm finally ready to stir the coating and apply it to the parts. With a solid coat on these, they look great, and I decided not to coat the flat surfaces that would be facing a lot of friction, but I may go back and do these later. Between videos, I'm going to attempt to get these powder coated so that they're more durable than using the POR and they won't fade over time. These bolts, however, will receive the wire wheel treatment and POR so that they don't rust over time. While I'm working on those parts, he's sealing up the last section where the paint cracked and bubbled before he can put on the next actual coat. After wet sanding the clear, it looks dull, but we're still working out various parts of the clear that look hazy. All that's left is a final cut and buff, and then the tank will be done. As you can see, the tank is finally done, but there are still a couple things left to be said. First is about the final and probably most important step of the process. Before being able to use the tank again, I had to seal the edge of the paint. Creating an overlap with the interior tank coating creates a strong barrier against fuel getting under and attacking it. As you can see here, I did the entire overflow tray and even up onto the edge a little bit. This ensures that these surfaces that regularly come in contact with gas and the paint will be safe. Above all, however, I want to give a huge thank you to my dad who helped me through every step of the process. I also want to say that I'm very inexperienced with the entire paint process and he is by no means an expert. So you need to take everything we say with a grain of salt and if you're doing this for yourself, seek professional help. I know this is going to be a long one, so thank you for watching. I hope everybody is staying safe and healthy in these times of adversity. If you liked the video or thought the tank turned out well, I'd appreciate it if you liked, commented, or even subscribed. Now I think I'm going to end this one with one last edit.